Welcome to GP Bullhounds Tech Thoughts. Today is the 25th of March, and we're here with Inge Haydorn and Naila Salkovic for our weekly market roundup. In today's episode, they will give a market update and talk about software, app billing, semis, and gaming. Over to them. Uh, let's start with the market update. And uh, the volatility is still quite high, but I would say with the upward bias for the moment. And it's quite interesting that the market now reacts positively uh, when Mr. Powell it was out stating that they may be hiking even 50 basis points at the next meeting. So I think the market now is really looking forward for the central banks to start engaging in the war against inflation. So that's that's positive news. So the market really wants to see a reaction. Uh, they're more worried about inflation than the higher interest rates. So I think that's a good step in the right direction for the market. Going over to software, uh, Adobe was really the key report this week. And uh, the report in itself, good, slightly better than expected, but uh, lower beat than usual for being Adobe. They normally beat quite a lot more, and this is the second quarter in a row with a lower than expected beat. And also the guidance for the coming quarter is slightly above consensus, and that's why we saw a negative share price reaction. Okay, why? The reason being Europe being a little bit on a halt, not just uh, in, in, in the eastern parts, but also in the western parts. Uh, they have felt some weakness um, in the last few weeks, and I think it it's a little bit of wait and see and see how the macro environment develops in Europe. And that's why they are a little bit more cautious on the guidance. Uh, the positive news is, although they expect uh, oh, increased speed of growth in the second half due to change of product portfolio and increase of prices. So another inflation point, even Adobe is increasing prices. And then you had um, Anaplan being bought by Thomas Bravo, 10.7 billion for a SaaS company. So another quite interesting deal on, on, on the stock exchange coming from the private equity side, buying out public companies. So that's also supporting um, the software side. Going over to uh, the app uh, billing systems, I think that is going to be something we're going to watch and highlight quite a lot in TechForce in the coming six to nine months. And now Google is testing with Spotify, uh, enabling Spotify to do billing uh, outside the Google billing. And what it really means is, is that the price on the commission is coming down. So the 30% or the 15, which they take somehow or from the bigger ones are coming down and we're going to see that opening up. Google is probably going to be more open to it than Apple, but I wouldn't be surprised that this is going to be the story of, of the year for Apple and Google, that the commissions are coming down. So I, I just wanted to highlight that. And uh, it hasn't really had the major reaction on the market base. But if you look at gaming stocks, it's really, really important when it comes to the commission size. Going over to semis. Um, the, the big guys, uh, Micron, Lam, Intel, all the CSOs being up at the Senate uh, Wednesday, talking about the Chips Act and trying to get the financing for it. And I think definitely we'll get it. It's really on the top of the agenda now, uh, as we see even more car factories closing down because of chip problems and so on. So I think we are on the way and this is on top of the budgets we've seen all, or, already before with subsidies locally and also the major subsidy package uh, released in Europe. And as you know, we like the vendor names, so apply, apply materials, KLAs, the LAMs and, and the ASML of the world. So we continue to think that the market is underestimating the long term growth and the less cyclicality that are in the stocks for the moment. So that was the, the key points from, from Semis and software. And now over to Nail on gaming. Thank you, Inge. And yes, let's do a quick gaming update then. And starting off with Tencent, who has released its full year financial result, um, showing total revenues from its game businesses have risen to RMB $27 billion. Um, domestic games accounted for 23% of this at RMB um, $20.2 billion and showing a year-on-year -year growth of 6%. Um, they also claimed it developed and operated uh, five of the 10 most played mobile games in the, in the world last year, and highlighted uh, League of Legends-based Netflix animated series as Arcane as another key success for its game businesses. 
it's, cu it's currently looking into developing new games, animated series, and movies based on Honor of Kings, so that's very exciting. And if we look at one of the slides from Tencent uh, earnings presentation last night, uh, we can see that the revenue from game distributed or received is now at 26%, uh, with the aim to reach 50%. Uh, so they're building a pipeline of titles across both self-developed titles and the games from acquired uh, partner studios via its level infinity brand. And over to some title updates then. Um, Elder Ring is already the third biggest new game of the, the past 12 months in the UK, ahead of F1 2021, um, Far Cry 6, Battlef Battlefield 2042, and uh, Resident Evil Village. Uh, we just have Call of uh, Duty Vanguard and FIFA 22 ahead of it. I mean, overall, I believe we can see a good demand for new upcoming games, even though first quarter game sales were not that great. Um, but yeah, exciting things coming. So thank you for today and see you next week. Bye.